Aha! Hello everyone and welcome to Dr. Gianquilo's lectures. Today's lecture is about milli equivalent. Milli equivalent, it's the concentration of electrolyte in one milliliter. And milli equivalent are used commonly in the inpatient setting in the hospital. For example, a patient who is in the ICU and not able to take any oral medication or supplementation, all these supplementation and electrolyte, they're given intravenously. And milli equivalent is very important when it comes into calculating the amount of electrolyte per patient. And one of the good examples that I can refer to is the banana bag. If you have worked in a hospital or maybe you've seen one of those bags, they are big yellow bag that contain multiple um, electrolyte and multivitamins. So when it comes into a milli equivalent, it basically considers the total numbers of ions in a solution and the valence of the ions. So what do I mean by the valence of the ions? So previous lecture, we discussed the numbers of particles. Today, we're going to go over the valence of the ions. So let's take an example. For example, sodium chloride. Previously, we discussed that sodium chloride basically dissociate into sodium plus chloride. And we said there are two particles in this. There is one particle over here and another over here. However, valence, it's different. Here we have a positive charge and here we have a negative charge. Therefore, the valence count for this sodium chloride is basically equal to one. So the number of valence are, is basically in this case one because we have one positive and one negative. Another example we discussed in the previous lecture was calcium chloride. And we said calcium chloride dissociate into calcium plus two chloride. Another way we can make this is basically this one instead of two chloride over here, this is what's going to be two, so chloride over here and another chloride over here. So this is a negative charge over here and a negative charge over there. And for the calcium part, this is two plus charge. So we have two plus charge for calcium and one negative for chloride and one negative for chloride over here. And a good way you can remember this is basically I always keep in mind calcium, magnesium, these ones basically always have positive two charge. And whenever you see such things that have positive two charge, one of these electrolyte, always remember the valence number for this uh, compound is basically going to be two. So in this case, the valence number is going to be two for this calcium chloride in comparison to sodium chloride over here. So this is something to keep in mind always. Always look into the charge of the compound that you're dealing with. Whether it's in the question or whether you're preparing for a NAPLEX exam or any other um, situation, whether you're working in a hospital, always look into the charge of that compound and see if there is any positive two. Any of these component has a positive two. In that case, in our case right now, we have two negative and two positive, so the valence would be two. In this case, we had one positive and one negative, so the valence would be one. So always look into this. This is basically a good way for you to remember and be able to count the valence numbers for these compounds. So now, let's move into the equation for milli equivalent and how are we able to calculate the milli equivalent for any question you may be able to see in exams or in, let's say, if you're preparing for a NAPLEX or lecture or in any way, you're going to be seeing these questions. So, the equation says milli equivalent equals milligram times valence number, which is over here. So, the milligram, it's going to be of the solute and over the molecular weight of the solute. 
And if you don't have molecular weight, like previously said in the previous lecture, the question usually they give us the molecular weight, but in case of if it's not there, then the question will give us the grams and moles of that solute. So we are able to calculate from these two components the molecular weight for that solute. So let's take an example to better understand how to apply this equation. Example number one says, how many milliequivalent, so we're looking for milliequivalent, of sodium chloride, okay, sodium chloride we just discussed has one valence, number of one, are present in 15 milliliter dose of a 10% weight over volume, so this is weight in volume, so again grams in milliliter like previously discussed, sodium chloride and molecular weight is given down here. So number one step. To apply this formula, we need to find out the valence number. So we discussed over here that sodium chloride is valence of one. So we know the valence over here is coming to be number one. We know this. Step number two is molecular weight, which is given over here. So we have two components. Now the third component is the milligram of sodium chloride. So how can we find the milligram? So we're given a solution which is 15 milliliter of 10%. So what are we gonna do first? Step number one is basically to set up this over here. So 10%, it's basically 10 gram over 100 milliliter, just like previously discussed in the previous lectures. Now it is in 15 milliliter, not in 100. So we need to find how many milligram are in 15 instead of 100. So we know there are 10 grams over 100 milliliter. So now we need to find X, which is the grams for the solute in 15 milliliter. So let's cross multiply these two. So if we cross multiply it, we're gonna have 15 times 10, which is 150. And this is going to be so we have over here gram and ml unit and equal to 100 milliliter and x. Now we're going to divide both parts by 100 milliliter. So this goes with this and then milliliter goes with milliliter. 150 over 100 so 0 goes with 0. 15 over 10 is what basically 1.5, so this is 1.5 gram. So far we haven't even got to the milligram, we just got the gram. Now we need to convert the gram to milligram. Multiplying this, so we know for one gram there is 1,000, so let's see, it's actually the opposite way, so 1,000 milligram over here and then one gram over here so we can cancel gram with gram is canceled. So 1.5 times 1000 so this is going to be let's put it over here 1500 milligram. So now we have the milligram we have the valence number and we have the molecular weight. All what we need to do is basically to plug it into the equation so let's look into this. The equation says milligram, which is 1,500 times valence, which is number one from here, over the molecular weight, which is 58.5. And if you were to plug in this in the calculator, you should basically end up with 20, 5.6 milli equivalent. And this would be your answer for this question. Now, let's move into question number two. How many milli equivalent of calcium chloride, molecular weight 2011, are in two grams of calcium chloride? So we're trying to find out how many milli equivalent. So here we had to take an extra step in order to find milligram. This question over here, it's more straightforward.
just to plug into the, the formula. However, we have something different in this question and that's the calcium chloride. The reason why, because calcium chloride, from here we know it has two valence number. So, we know we have two valence number. So let's, let's plug into the equation. So milliequivalent equation says milligram, so where we have two grams, so two grams is 2,000 milligrams, so here we have 2,000 milligram times the valence number, which we know it's two from here, and dividing by the molecular weight. Molecular weight is 111. So now everything is set up. All what we need to do is just solve for this. And if you were to plug in this in the calculator, you will end up with 36 milli equivalent. And that's the answer for this question. Therefore, it's always important to, be, to know and be able to calculate the valence number for any compound that you will be seeing in a question, uh, whether if it's in a class or in any situation you're having a question to, be, to solve for these type of uh, substance and in order to be able to dispense the correct amount of electrolyte per patient. So this is it for this video. If you have any question, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.